dark Africa with 150 million souls. The villages were in darkness without God. The mothers were without God. The children were without God. They worshipped wooden idols in whom they believed chief ancestor spirits lived. They brought little children to worship before the idols. The tribal priests prayed to the spirits in behalf of the people for help against disease and drought and sorcerers and all manner of evil. The medicine man practiced the art of healing with incantations to the dark world of the spirits. The little boys were taken to initiation camps to be painfully circumcised by unclean men. Their hearts were filled with dark thoughts of spirits and lust and sorcery. Their bodies were whitewashed with lime to signify their initiation into young manhood. The Semakingo to the left was the chief over the Wanaramba people. He was their great high priest. He was the king of the land of the shadow of death. Without God, they wander like drunken men, staggering along in the darkness which leads to eternal night. Death became a time for drunkenness and wild dancing unleashing the dark passions of the darkened hearts, the abandon of a people living without God. Lost in the night, the mother calls in vain to the spirits who have taken away her son or daughter or someone else close to her. The death dance continues through the night. As the shadows lengthen over the grave, so they lengthen over her darkened soul. The death dance horn sends out its blast. The tom-tom accompanies the dance. The prostrate mother and her people are hopelessly lost as they grope in darkness without light. That is where we would also be without our Savior, Jesus Christ. church obeyed the command to bring God's light to dark Africa when Pastor Ralph Daniel Holt became our first African missionary. He traveled among the tribes of the Western Sudan and chose the Shara people for our field of work. But God intervened with other plans. And missionary Holt received this telegram. Missionary leaders called upon our synod to help in East Africa, from which the German missionaries had been repatriated after the First World War. And he went traveling by sea over 6,000 miles to Tanganyika territory, East Africa. He came to the woman Wachaga Christians on the beautiful slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro. For four years, our missionaries helped Wachaga and adjacent people. And the thankfulness for this help is reflected in the face of this Christian leader. In 1926, the German missionaries returned, and our missionaries stood ready for a fresh task. God guided them in 1927 to central Tanganyika, to the Wanaramba people, lost without God, groping in thick darkness without light. Africa calls in vain to the dark spirit world. The light of the cross dispels this darkness. The 
That great light was sown in the hearts of thousands of sin-darkened people. It was done through the word of God, spread by your ambassadors of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. The sick come as they came to Jesus. They are thankful. Diseases and blindnesses and ulcers, which never before had healed, now begin to heal. Every patient hears the gospel of salvation from nurses and doctors and African assistants. Countless souls have been brought to their Savior through the Christian medical work. The cross at the entrance to the Christian hospital is the central message. The helpless and dying are carried by friends and relatives to the missionary doctor. They are often carried in a blanket, the African ambulance. And sometimes the afflicted is carried 40 miles this way. In the hospital courtyard, the bearers are shown a bed on which to rest their helpless burden until a place in the ward can be prepared. And they are often overcrowded. All manner of operations are performed, minor and major, all in the name of the great physician. The African entrusts himself into the hands of the Christian doctor. And prayer is offered before operations are begun. African men, trained by our doctors and nurses, ably assist. Thousands of outcast lepers knew nothing of hope or light until the gospel of Jesus arrived. Have mercy upon us was their cry. African lepers were trained to treat their fellow lepers. Jesus enters into their hearts, cleansing them of the leprosy of sin and giving them hope and light. The light of Jesus has dawned even on their faces. But the task of healing, both the leprosy of the heart and the body, goes on until Jesus comes again. Where is all this healing of all manner of disease conducted? At this Christian hospital at Kiomboy, as well as at Yambi, Ujola, Izanzu, Wimberi, Uwanza, Mutinko, Mikeu, Turo Turo, and elsewhere. These are all on our field. This is the inpatient's courtyard at Kionboy Hospital. One of the greatest tasks of our doctors and nurses is to train African men to assist with operations, to use the microscope, and to become fully trained dressers who conduct dispensaries and clinics. Christian young women complete their schooling with a short course at the hospital. Some become nurses and midwives. Others return home to spread cleanliness and hygiene and the great light of Jesus. Over 20 million African children must be brought to Jesus. The mission has no greater responsibility 
than to bring Jesus to the little children. Scattered over our Ramba field are almost 100 little bush schools where reading and writing is taught, and the children hear their first stories of Jesus. At the main stations are better schools, such as this one at Izanzu. Out of these schoolboys come leaders for the church and the tribe. Nathanelli is a typical Christian teacher, a graduate of a Christian training school and a holder of the government grade two certificate for teaching. And pray that out of Africa's simple schools may arise more great African Christians. And 200,000 Christian teachers like Nathanelli for Africa. The African is a great lover of games. In bringing the light of Jesus to the Africans, it becomes part of the duty of the Christian missions to raise the moral life of the community through the introduction of clean fun, to take the place of the games and dances which were of the world of darkness. Play day is a happy community affair. Africans are excellent athletes. Others join heartily in the fun of the day. Competition is keen, but the main purpose for the African is hearty enjoyment and laughter. Men and boys love to compete in archery with their homemade bows and arrows. God has blessed the Africans with the gift of song. It will become one of their major contributions to the rest of mankind. Definite Christian songs are the most popular. The gospel has spread far and wide through familiar hymns. The Christian sings a song to the chords of his simple heart. They sing as they hoe in the field. makes the work easier. Children's choruses are common. And it's difficult to sing and have your picture taken at the same time. And they might be singing to a powerful African tune. Praise God the King Jesus has come. These girls' students are harvesting pumpkins. Their school training is not divorced from their home and tribal training. As they make these clay water pots, they themselves are also being molded by the great potter in whose hands we should be as clay. The finished products are beautiful. but they must be baked in fire to become hardened and useful. For the master's use is the aim of the Christian school. The girl students harvest peanuts. They also thresh their grain. God says the wicked are like the shaft which the wind bloweth when the grain is winnowed. These schoolgirls do not become the shaft, but the wheat, which Jesus gathers in his garner. They become homemakers, teachers, nurses, and witnesses unto the great light. The most important school in Africa is the Christian Teachers Training School such as the one at Kinampanda. 
One sees a few of the students in front of their dormitories. And these are over 100 selected students from many tribes at Kinampanda. And they march to chapel, for Jesus Christ is the heart of the school. Africa needs 200,000 elementary school teachers besides pastors and countless Christian leaders. We must bring the children of Af Africa to Jesus through the training of thousands of Christian teachers. And these are the men who are lights, carrying forward the great light to their own people, sitting in darkness. It is a joyous thing how Jesus changes the dark heart into a heart of his great light. Brightest dawn in Africa is through the direct gospel upon the darkened soul. The discarded auto rim is the church bell calling them to come. They accept Jesus Christ as their savior and after two years of instruction they are baptized. Mothers with babies come by the score. Your ambassador brings the message to the baptismal candidates. And these trees were only recently sacred trees under which sacrifices were offered to the dark spirit world. Black and white together produce beautiful harmonious music. The first fruits of the harvest are brought to God and laid within the outdoor altar ring. Knees are bent to the ground and hearts are bowed as these Africans are baptized into the body of the living Christ. An African evangelist Noah Simeon assists by holding the clay vessel which contains the baptismal water. As knees are bent and heads are bowed, the woman may take the name Welu, meaning lights and a man may take the name Naoma Welu, meaning I see the light. Nearly 10,000 Wanaramba have been baptized since August 1929, only 16 years ago. Meshach Makoma, a medical worker, leads his little child to baptism in Jesus. Holy Communion is a precious treasure of the newly born African Christians as they receive their Savior's body and blood. The benediction of the upraised hand symbolizes the birth of a people of God, rescued out of the land of the shadow of death. The great light dawning in their hearts is not only for the few, but for all. So African evangelists take the gospel to the people everywhere, gathering them under trees and in the fields if need be. And thus the great light spreads abroad. The wedding bells ring. It is the light of Jesus Christ which raises the level of womanhood and manhood. It also raises the level of marriage from a dark level to a level upon which the light of the gospel shines. To bring true love into the heart of Africa's young men and women and to found true Christian homes is one of the greatest tasks our Savior has. African Christians decide to build a church. 
and the ground is broken for the foundation. The women carry water in their gourds. The water is poured into the hole, where mud and clay are mixed for the making of sun-dried bricks. It takes thousands of bricks to build a church, and Jesus makes each African into a brick for his own. Christian blacksmith contributes his skill in the making of an axe head. He can also forge and shape trowels, and such handicraft is encouraged. The bricks are now dry and hard, and the women carry them to the place of building. They gracefully balance 30 pounds of bricks on their heads. African masons taught by the mission lay the brick and do the building. The walls go up gradually. Inside and outside the building proceeds. structure goes up. The Africans contribute labor and gifts. The mission contributes the roof and materials. Looking down on the completed church in the valley of Izanzu, the bell rings out the glad news. People come from every direction in answer to its ringing call. As the people came to be baptized into Christ, they now come to dedicate the completed church to the work of the kingdom of light. Is not the dedication the dawn of a new day for Africa? Have not the people seen great light? Nagumwa cannot see the church, but he does see Jesus, his Savior, and a little child leads him to the place of fellowship with Jesus and fellow Christians. They come reminding one of the multitudes who sought Jesus and upon whom he had compassion, for they needed shepherds, and Africa's multitudes need missionaries. church is filling up. And the boys like to assist with the dedication with their simple musical instruments, making a joyful noise unto the Lord, one might almost say. The black and white blend into one in the house of God. Light streams across the congregation from the three windows above the altar as the message is given. Now other churches lifting high the cross are dedicated as a symbol of the victory of the light of God in dark Africa. After 17 years, the Aramba Church totals nearly 10,000 Christians with large congregational areas at Rurumba, Iambi, Ujola, Izanzu, Kionboy, Wemberi, and Kinampanda.
But what of the 140,000 Turu people south of Iramba? There we have only two stations, Mutinko and Singida. Our challenge is to do for Turu what we have done for Irambi. Will you do it? And then came war. German missionaries interned. Christian schools closed. Christian hospitals closed. Missionary funds stopped. The responsibilities of our mission as a member of Lutheran World Convention increased a thousandfold with the declaration of war. Who would show compassion upon the 85,000 African Christians orphaned by the war? Five African churches were affected. The Buea field, 54,000 Christians. The Chagaperi field, 51,000 Christians. The Usaraba field, 11,000 Christians. The Usarama field, 1,600 Christians. And the Uvena Kondi field, 25,000 Christians. Who would help shepherd them? missionary journey to Africa's war orphan churches had begun. All is quiet for one month. Zamzam torpedoed. For the minute shells tore into the helpless Zamzam, wounded men groaned in the passageways. The Mohammedan crew was panic-stricken. Lifeboats overturned in shark-infested South Atlantic water. Two of our missionaries and children were in the water for nearly an hour. The missionary mother said to her children, keep your mouth shut and pray. No matter what happens, we are safe in Jesus. And God saves all our 19 Augustana missionaries and children. And the German ship Dresden became their prison home for 30 days on the ocean. Their lives were in the hands of God. They knew nothing of where they would be taken. Their life was one of Jesus only on the sea. Food was scarce and very poor. The children went hungry every day. Bread was received, thankfully. In submarine and battleship infested waters, lifeboat drill was frequent and very serious. More and warmer clothes were needed as the Dresden moved north and the sewing machine hummed. overshadowing every other activity on the prison ship were the prayer services every day. Prayer for themselves, prayer for loved ones thousands of miles away in Africa and America, and overwhelming united prayer for Africa's lost people. Once the ships of a British convoy were sighted and the prisoners scanned the horizon for a possible bloody encounter. But the little children lived from hour to hour in that peace-loving play, characteristic of all the world's children. And unless you become as little children, Jesus says. For three nights, they slept with their life belts under their heads as they pierced the British blockade of Europe. Unknown to themselves, their overcrowded conditions were soon to end. God saved them, and the shores of Spain and the Bay of Biscay appear on the horizon. Safe and sound, they are landed in occupied France on May 20th, two months after leaving New York. They were saved by the promise of God. They were saved to serve. 
Most of his ambassadors on the Zamzam and Dresden are now back in Africa serving Jesus. God used the sinking of the Zamzam to the advancement of his kingdom in Africa. His kingdom was now set back, and the light of Jesus shines brighter and brighter. New churches raise the cross high in African skies. The gospel of light is proclaimed. Jesus shines in the face of mother and babe. More and more Christian schools for African boys and girls are being opened. As the African lad tends his lamb, we are told by Jesus as a church, feed my lambs. As the little boy carries his baby brother, the young African church is willing to carry its share in the evangelization of Africans. The light of Christ raises womanhood beautifully high into new life. African evangelists spread the light of Christ. More and more Christian teachers are being trained for the kingdom of his life. More and more African nurses are also trained. The missionary guides the young African Christian in his enthusiastic preaching of the gospel of light. And I think Pedro of our Ramba church is pleading with us Christians of America as follows from Jesus. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. <laughs>